Hello! So, as you may be aware, the upcoming Elsewhere chapter is now live on the PTS, and with it comes the new Necromancer class. In this video, I'm going to be going over all of the class passives and skills and show you what they look like. Do be aware though that this is the PTS, so things are subject to change. I'll post any updates in the comments, so do keep an eye out for that. Now, I was planning on making this video a few weeks ago, actually. I was lucky enough to be invited to a press event here in London and try out the new Necromancer class, but unfortunately I didn't really get all of the footage that I needed, so I thought I would just wait until the PTS. Alright, well, enough preamble, let's get into our skills. Okay, so as you can see, we've got our three skill trees here. We've got Gravelord, which is our damage tree, Bone Tyrant, which is our tanking tree, and Living Death, which is our healing tree. So let's have a look at Gravelord first. First skill is Flame Skull. Lob an explosive skull at an enemy dealing 7089 flame damage. Every third cast of this ability deals 20% increased damage. And it looks something like this. One, and two, and three. And our morphs for this are Venom Skull. This is our stamina morph. It now does poison damage and you can cast any Necromancer ability and it will count towards the third cast. And the other morph is Ricochet Skull. Every third cast of this ability deals 20% increased damage and will bounce up to two times to other nearby enemies. Blast Bones. Summon a flaming skeleton from the ground after 2.5 seconds. The skeleton runs after the target and explodes when it gets close to them, dealing 11,148 flame damage to all enemies nearby. Creates a corpse on death. And here it is in action. Yeah, get him. Our morphs for this one are... Blighted Blast Bones, this is our Stamina Morph. It now does disease damage and applies Major Defile for 4 seconds. And the other morph is Stalking Blast Bones. Every second the skeleton spends chasing its target increases the damage of the explosion by 10%, up to a maximum of 50% more damage. Now, I can't really show you this one because I don't have any moving targets, but uh, yeah, it's quite fun. Boneyard. Desecrate the ground at the target location, dealing 22,748 frost damage over 10 seconds. Consumes a corpse on cast to deal 20% more damage. An ally standing in the graveyard can activate the Grave Robber synergy, dealing 10,792 frost damage to enemies in the area and healing you for the damage done. And it looks something like this. Now, I don't know if this is bugged or what, but sometimes either the tombstones are invisible or they don't come all the way out of the ground. Uh, let me try and cast it over here. Yeah, it's a bit better. So I don't know if it's a bug, or if it just depends on the ground you're on, or what. Hmm. And our morphs for Boneyard are Unnerving Boneyard. This now applies Major Breach and Major Fracture to all enemies within the area. And the other morph is Avid Boneyard. This does the same as the base skill, but you can now activate your own synergy. It's a little bit tricky though, you've got to be right in the center. So I'm hoping they alter that, because it doesn't really work that well at the moment. <laughs> skeletal Mage. Unearth a Skeletal Mage from the dirt to fight by your side for 16 seconds. The mage attacks the closest enemy every 2 seconds, dealing 2,361 shock damage. Creates a corpse on death. And here's how it looks. Uh, 
And our morphs are Skeletal Archer, so this is our Stamina Morph. You now summon an Archer which deals physical damage, and each time it deals damage, the next attack will do 10% more than the previous. And our Magicka Morph is Skeletal Arcanist. The mage attacks the closest enemy every two seconds, dealing shock damage to them and all other enemies nearby. Shocking Siphon. Violently drain the last spark of life from a corpse, dealing 22,248 shock damage over 12 seconds to all enemies around the corpse and between you and the corpse. While slotted, your damage done is increased by 3%. And for this one, I need a corpse first, so I'm going to use my Blast Bones. Off you go. And there's the Tether. So I can come quite far. And our Morphs are Detonating Siphon. This is our Stamina Morph. This now deals disease damage, and the corpse explodes at the end of the siphon, dealing additional damage. And the Magicka Morph is Mystic Siphon. So this is the same as the base skill, but you restore Magicka while siphoning the corpse. And our ultimate is Frozen Colossus. Unleash a frostbitten flesh colossus to pulverize enemies in the area. The colossus smashes the ground three times over three seconds, dealing 8,917 frost damage with each smash. Each smash applies major vulnerability to any enemy hit for three seconds, increasing their damage taken by 30%. Pretty cool. And the morphs are... Pestilent Colossus. This now deals disease damage, which increases with each smash. And the other morph is Glacial Colossus. This does the same as the base skill, but the final smash stuns all enemies hit for three seconds. Okay, so let's have a look at our Gravelord passives. We've got reusable parts. When an enemy dies within 4 seconds of being damaged by one of your Necromancer abilities, your next Blast Bones, Skeletal Mage or Spirit Mender cast is free. Death Knell Increases your critical strike chance against enemies under 25% health by 10% for each Gravelord ability slotted. Dismember While a Gravelord ability is active, your spell and physical penetration are increased by 1500. And Rapid Rot increases your damage done with damage over time effects by 10%. Okay, now we get to Bone Tyrant. This is our tanking tree. First up, we have Death Scythe. Slice into your enemy's life force, dealing 5,447 magic damage and healing you for 2,885 for the first enemy hit. The heal grows in power by 961 for each additional enemy hit up to 5 times. This portion of the ability scales off your max health. Let's have a look at our morphs. We've got Ruinous Scythe, so this is our stamina morph. It now deals physical damage, and enemies damaged by you also receive 2000 heal absorption for 2 seconds, negating any healing they receive. And the other morph is Hungry Scythe. So this does the same as the base skill, but also, after dealing damage, you heal every one second over five seconds. The number, I've got 384 there, but this scales off your max health, so that number will vary depending on your health. Bone Armor. Wrap yourself in hardened bone, granting you major resolve and major ward, increasing your physical and spell resistance by 5,280 for 17 seconds. Creates a corpse when the effect completes. And it looks like this. 
So we'll just wait for a second and then you'll see when it runs out, there's a corpse that you can consume. Come in. There we go. And our morphs for this are Beckoning Armor. Does the same as the base skill, but also, while active, enemies that strike you with ranged attacks will be pulled towards you once every three seconds. And the other morph is Summoner's Armor. So it does the same as the base skill, but also, while active, reduce the cost of Blast Bones, Skeletal Mage, and Spirit Mender by 12%. So all of your summoning abilities. Bitter Harvest. Sap the lingering life from fresh corpses, granting you two ultimate and healing for 714 every one second for two seconds per corpse consumed. This ability scales off of your max health. While slotted, your damage taken is reduced by 3%. So this one requires a corpse, so I'm going to send out a Blast Bones first. There we go. Our morphs are Dead and Pain. This does the same as the base skill, but also, while you have the heal in effect, you gain major protection, reducing the damage you take by 30%. And the other morph is Necrotic Potency. So this is pretty much the same as the base skill, but only you gain 6 ultimate every second instead of 2. Bone Totem. Place a Totem of Bone at your feet that gives minor protection to you and your allies for 8 seconds, reducing your damage taken by 8%. After 2 seconds, the Totem instills fear in the enemies, holding them in place for 4 seconds. And it looks something like this. You can see I've got this glowy aura. And the morphs for this are Remote Totem. So it does the same as the base skill, but only you can summon it up to 28 meters away. And the other morph is Agony Totem. So it does the same as the base skill, but in addition, allies can activate the pure agony synergy, causing enemies to take 6,618 magic damage over 5 seconds, and applying minor vulnerability to them for the duration, increasing their damage taken by 8%. Grave Grasp Summon 3 patches of skeletal claws from the ground in front of you, snaring your enemies by 50% for 5 seconds, and inflicting minor maim for 5 seconds, reducing their damage done by 15%. And the morphs for this... Ghostly Embrace, so in addition to what the base skill does, each patch can now immobilize one enemy for 3.1 seconds. And the other morph is Empowering Grasp. So the additional effects are hitting you or your allies grants them Empower for 5 seconds, increasing the damage of their next light attack by 40%. Hitting your Skeletal Mage or Spirit Mender enhances them for 5 seconds, increasing their effectiveness by 40%. And our ultimate for this skill line is Bone Goliath. Become a horrific Bone Goliath, increasing your max health by 30,000 for 20 seconds and immediately restoring 30,000 health. While transformed, your light attacks restore 384 health and your fully charged heavy attacks restore 961 health. This ability scales off of your max health. And here's how it looks. <laughs> so, pretty cool. And you can still use your abilities. And the morphs for our Bone Goliath are Pummeling Goliath. So in addition to all that other good stuff, your bash attacks can hit multiple targets in front of you and deal 2,391 physical damage. And the other morph is Ravenous Goliath. So you gain an aura around you that deals damage to nearby enemies every second and heals you for that amount. Okay, let's have a look at our passives. We've got Death Gleaning. You need to have a Bone Tyrant ability slotted for this to be active. 
Whenever an enemy you're in combat with dies within 28 meters of you, restore 100 magicka and stamina. This effect can occur once every two seconds. Disdain harm. Reduce the damage you take from damage over time effects by 10% while you have a Bone Tyrant ability active. Health Avarice. Increase your healing received by 2% for each Bone Tyrant ability slotted. And last gasp. Increase your max health by 2000. And finally, let's have a look at the Living Death skill tree. First up, we've got Render Flesh. Sacrifice your own power to repair damaged flesh, healing you or an ally in front of you for 7,976 health, but applying minor defile to yourself for 4 seconds, reducing your healing received and health recovery by 15%. And our morphs are resistant flesh. So in addition to what the base skill does, you also grant the target spell and physical resistance equal to half the amount healed for three seconds. And the other morph is blood sacrifice. So this consumes a corpse near you when you cast to heal a second target. Expunge. This one actually costs health. Embrace the power of death removing up to two negative effects from yourself. While slotted, the cost of all your abilities are reduced by 3%. Are reduced? Should that be is reduced? Whatever, 3%. Very nice. And for this one, I need a negative effect to show you. So I'm gonna cast Render Flesh, and then Expunge. Render Flesh, Expunge. And the morphs for this one, Expunge and Modify. So, in addition to the base effect, you'll restore 500 Magicka and Stamina for each negative effect removed. And the other morph is Hexproof. So, with this one, you can remove up to four negative effects. Life Amid Death. Release residual fragments of fallen souls at the target location, healing you and your allies for 5,315 health. Consumes a corpse on cast to continue to heal you and your allies in the area for 5,140 health over 5 seconds. Now, I can't really show you this one properly because I don't have any allies to heal and the training dummies don't hit back. But it does consume corpses, so I'll show you that. Send out my blast bones. Off he goes. And there we are. So you can see we got this cool kind of rune thing on the ground. It's pretty sweet. The morphs for this one are Renewing Undeath. So when you consume a corpse, as well as that heal over time, you can also remove up to three negative effects. And the other morph is Enduring Undeath. So with this one, you can consume up to five additional corpses on cast, with each corpse extending the duration of the heal over time by five seconds. Spirit Mender. Conjure a ghostly spirit to do your bidding and stay by your side for 16 seconds. The spirit heals you or the lowest health ally around you every 2 seconds, restoring 1,594 health. Creates a corpse on death. And here's how it looks. A little ghosty. Now I'm going to do this so you can see him healing me. And the morphs for Spirit Mender are Spirit Guardian. So while active, 10% of the damage you take is transferred to the Spirit instead. And the other morph is Intensive Mender. So this heals for three times the amount, but lasts half as long. Restoring Tether. Siphon the last remnants of life from a corpse, healing for 14,292 health over 12 seconds to yourself and all allies between you and the corpse. While slotted, your healing done is increased by 3%. And again, this one requires a corpse, so let's send out my blast bones. There we go. And there's the healing tether. So it's kind of similar to the one from the Gravelord tree in terms of how it looks. And the morphs for this one are braided tether. So this heals you, all allies around you, as well as all allies between you and the corpse. And the other morph is mortal coil. 
You also restore 2,736 stamina over 12 seconds while siphoning the corpse. And our ultimate is reanimate. Bring your allies back from the brink of death, resurrecting up to three allies at the target location. So you can res three people all at once up to a range of 28 meters. Now, I can't really show you this one because I don't have any teammates with me to resurrect, but I'll pop it anyway and you can see the effect on the ground. There we go. So you can see it's a pretty huge area. Yeah, it's a lot more impressive when you're actually resing someone. <laughs> and our morphs for this. Renewing animation. You restore 5,000 magicka and stamina for each ally you resurrect. The other morph is animate blast bones. You consume up to three other corpses in the area and summon a blast bones for each corpse consumed. And let's have a look at our passives. Curative Curse. While you have a negative effect on you, your healing done is increased by 8%. Near Death Experience. While you have a Living Death ability slotted, your critical strike chance with all healing abilities is increased by up to 20% in proportion to the severity of the target's wounds. Corpse Consumption. When you use an ability on a corpse, you generate 10 ultimate. This effect can occur once every 16 seconds. And Undead Confederate. While you have a Necromancer Summon active, your Magicka and Stamina recovery is increased by 300. One new feature you may have heard about is that if you cast some of your Necromancer abilities in towns or in front of NPCs, you'll get a bounty. Generally, necromancy is frowned upon by the normies, so that's fair enough, I suppose. Now, it's pretty obvious which skills these are, if we have a look. So we've got our Stalking Blast Bones. Casting him is a criminal act, as is the Skeletal Arcanist. So it's basically any of your summoning skills. Now, to illustrate, I'm here in Rimin, which is the main town in Elsewhere. So why don't we find a guard and we'll see what happens. Okay, we've got a couple of guards up here. Let's see what they think about it. All right, chaps. Ah! Run away! Run away! So there we go. I hope you found that interesting. If there are any skills or morphs that I didn't show you, it's either because the morph looked pretty much the same as the base skill, or that there's a certain condition required for the skill to work that I couldn't show you just testing on a dummy by myself. But that should give you a pretty good idea of what we're going to get with the Necromancer. I'm very excited for it. I didn't really discuss my thoughts on any of these skills or passives, so let's get a discussion going in the comments. I'm very keen to hear what you guys think. Please give the video a like if you liked it, and if you're new to the channel, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more videos like this. I also have a Twitch channel. I haven't been streaming on there much lately, but I do hope to rectify that very soon. I mainly stream ESO, so do drop me a follow over there. Links to that and all my other social media are in the description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.